In the video lesson, an introduction to the boundary element method through the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, we derive a boundary integral solution for the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, in the region R, bounded by a curve C. Here is the boundary integral solution for the two-dimensional Laplace's equation. Recall that capital Phi is the fundamental solution of the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, and Phi is the solution of the boundary value problem under consideration. Here is the fundamental solution, capital Phi, X, Y, Xi, eta, equal, 1 over 4 pi, natural log, X minus Xi square, plus, Y minus eta square. For points, X, Y, in the region, our union C, the fundamental solution, capital Phi, X, Y, Xi eta, satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation everywhere, except at X, Y, equals, Xi eta. The boundary integral equation for the two-dimensional Laplace's equation is still valid with possibly only minor changes in the parameter, lambda xi eta, if we modify the function, capital phi, to become, capital phi, x, y, xi, eta, equal, 1 over 4 pi, natural log of, x minus xi square, plus, y minus eta square, plus, capital phi star, x, y, xi, eta. The function, capital Phi star, satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation for all points, x, y, and, xi eta, in the region R. Instead of taking capital Phi star, equal, 0, we may find it advantageous to choose, capital Phi star, that satisfies certain boundary conditions. The function, capital Phi, with a specially chosen, capital Phi star, may be referred to as a Green's function. In this video lesson, we show how Green's functions may be constructed for some special domains and boundary conditions, and how they may be applied together with the boundary integral equation to solve specific potential problems. The term potential problem is usually used to refer to a boundary value problem governed by the Laplace's equation. We will now construct a Green's function for the half space, y strictly greater than zero. The Green's function, capital Phi, is required to satisfy the homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the boundary y equals zero, that is, the condition, capital Phi equals zero, at y equals zero. Mathematically, the problem of constructing the Green's function may be stated as follows. For y strictly greater than zero, and eta strictly greater than zero, find the function, capital Phi star, such that, capital Phi, x, 0, xi, eta, equals, 0, that is, find capital Phi star that satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, and the condition, capital Phi star, x, 0, xi, eta, equals, minus 1 over, 4 pi, times, natural log, x minus psi square, plus, eta square, Here is a sketch of the half space, y strictly greater than zero. Let, x, y, and, xi eta, be points in the interior of the half space. The point, xi, minus eta, which lies outside the half space, is the mirror image of the point, xi eta, about the x-axis. The distance separating x, y, and, xi, eta, is denoted by s1. 
while the distance separating x, y, and xi minus eta is denoted by s2. The natural log of the distance between the point x, y, and any given point p is a solution of the two-dimensional Laplace's equation everywhere, except at the point p. Noting that s1 equals s2 at y equals zero, we take capital phi star equals a times natural log of s2 and choose the constant a to satisfy the condition capital phi equals zero at y equals zero. The function capital phi star equals a times natural log of s2 can be rewritten as capital phi star x y xi eta equal a over 2 natural log of x minus psi square plus y plus eta square the condition capital phi equals 0 at y equals 0 can be rewritten as capital phi star x 0 xi eta equal minus 1 over 4 pi natural log of x minus psi square plus eta square hence we obtain a equals minus 1 over 2 pi for points x y and xi eta in the half space y strictly greater than 0 the distance s2 cannot be equal to 0 hence the function capital phi star constructed here satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation everywhere in the half space. Here is the constructed Green's function for the half space, y strictly greater than zero, with a homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the boundary y equals zero. We will now look at an example application of the Green's function for the half space, y strictly greater than zero, with a homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the boundary y equals zero. Consider solving the two dimensional Laplace's equation in the region R, bounded by a simple closed curve C. The curve C consists of two parts denoted by E and D, where E is part of the x axis and d is a curve in the region y strictly greater than zero the solution phi of the laplace's equation satisfies the condition phi equals zero on e either phi or the normal derivative of phi not both is specified at each and every point on d at a given point on d if phi is known then the normal derivative of phi is unknown or vice versa. Here is the boundary integral solution of the two-dimensional Laplace's equation. We take the function, capital phi, in the boundary integral solution to be the Green's function for the half space, y strictly greater than zero, with a homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the boundary y equals zero. As phi, and capital phi, are both zero on E, the integral over E, in the boundary integral equation vanishes. Hence, with the use of the special Green's function, the boundary integral solution requires integration over only the curve D. If we use this boundary integral solution to derive a boundary element procedure, for the numerical solution of the boundary value problem under consideration here, no discretization of the line E is needed. Only the curve D has to be discretized into straight line elements. Furthermore, we only need to collocate the discretized boundary integral equation at points on only the elements of D to generate the linear algebraic equations for finding the unknowns on the elements. This gives rise to a smaller system of linear algebraic equations to be solved. 
with the function capital phi, given by the special Green's function, the parameter lambda, in the boundary integral equation, can be shown to have the value 0, if the points i, eta, lies on the line E. Note that this is different from the case where capital phi, is given by the fundamental solution of the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, that is, for the case where capital phi star is taken to be 0. The programming of the boundary element procedure based on the boundary integral equation here is detailed in the book, A Beginner's Course in Boundary Element Methods. A Green's function for the half space, y strictly greater than 0, with a homogeneous Newman condition on the boundary y equals 0, may be constructed in a similar manner as the Green's function for the Dirichlet condition. The homogeneous Newman condition requires the normal derivative of capital Phi to be zero at Y equals zero. The X and Y components of the unit outward normal vector to the half space on the boundary Y equals zero are given by zero and minus one, respectively. Hence, the homogeneous Newman condition can be written as del capital Phi over del Y equals 0, at y equals 0. We can easily verify, by direct substitution, that the Green's function, capital Phi here, satisfies the homogeneous Newman condition. We will now look at how the Green's function for the half space y strictly greater than 0, with a homogeneous Newman condition on the boundary y equals 0, can be used to solve a particular potential problem. Let's see, be a simple closed curve in the half space y strictly greater than 0, and r, be the subregion of the half space that lies outside c. We are interested in solving the two dimensional Laplace's equation for phi, in the region r. The solution phi, satisfies the homogeneous Newman condition, del phi, over, del y, equals, 0, on the boundary y equals 0. Either phi, or the normal derivative of phi, not both, is specified at each and every point on the interior boundary C. For the far field condition, we require phi, to vanish to 0 as, x square plus y square, tends to infinity within the region R. To derive a boundary integral solution for the potential problem under consideration, we model the solution domain R, in a limiting sense, as follows. Consider the semicircular region bounded by the x-axis, and the circle x square plus y square, equals, rho square, in the half space, y strictly greater than zero. The boundary of the semicircular region comprises the semicircle, denoted by C rho, and the straight line on the x-axis from x equals minus rho, to, x equals rho. The interior boundary C, of the potential problem, lies inside the semicircular region. The region between C, and the boundary of the semicircular region, is denoted by our row. The solution domain R, of the potential problem, can be recovered by letting the radius rho, tend to infinity. Here is the boundary integral solution for the potential problem under consideration. Let us take a look at the last line integral, that is, the 1 over E rho, where E rho, is the part of the x-axis, from x equals minus rho, to, x equals rho. From the given boundary condition of the potential problem, the normal derivative of phi, is 0, on E rho. Since we take the function capital phi, in the boundary integral equation to be the Green's function for the half space with the homogeneous Newman condition, the normal derivative of capital phi, is also 0, on E rho. Hence, 
with capital phi given by the special Green's function, the line integral over E rho, is equal to zero. The line integral over C rho, in the limit as, rho tends to infinity, can be evaluated by considering the behavior of phi, for large x square plus y square. We require phi, to vanish to zero, as x square plus y square tends to infinity, within the solution domain. Let r and theta, be the polar coordinate centered about the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system. For large r, we assume that phi, is given asymptotically by, a, theta, times, r, to the power of, minus alpha, where a is a well-defined function of theta, and alpha is a positive real constant. With this, we can show that the integral over c rho, vanishes asymptotically to zero, as rho, tends to infinity. Hence, with the use of the special Green's function, the boundary integral solution of the potential problem, requires integration over, only the interior boundary C. The boundary condition on Y equals zero, and the far field condition are automatically satisfied by the boundary integral equation here. If the function capital Phi is taken to be the usual fundamental solution, instead of the special Green's function for the half space with the homogeneous Newman condition, the path of integration would have to include the entire x-axis. This shows clearly the advantage of using the special Green's function. If a region can be transformed via a conformal mapping to a half space, we can derive Green's functions for the region with a homogeneous condition of, either Dirichlet or Newman type, on the boundary. For example, consider the infinitely long strip occupying the region between the horizontal lines, y equals 0 and y equals h, on the OXY plane, that is, the region given by, y strictly greater than 0 and y strictly less than h. The conformal mapping, given by the complex equation, u plus iv, equals, complex exponential function of, pi, x plus iy, over, h, can be used to transform the infinitely long strip to the half space, v strictly greater than 0, on the OUV plane. The boundary y equals 0 of the strip is mapped to the positive u-axis, while y equals h to the negative u-axis. That is, the lines y equals 0 and y equals h, bounding the strip, are mapped to the boundary, v equals 0, of the half space. Here are the real equations relating the u and v coordinates to the x and y coordinates. Let us now look at some pertinent equations for the conformal mapping between the infinitely long strip on the OXY plane, and the half space on the OUV plane. Here are the equations relating the coordinates u and v, to the coordinates x and y, and vice versa. If phi, is a function of the point, x, y, in the infinitely long strip, the corresponding function of the point, u, v, in the half space is denoted by psi. It can be shown that phi, satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation, in the strip, if and only if psi, satisfies the two-dimensional Laplace's equation in the half space. The homogeneous Dirichlet or Newman condition is invariant under the conformal mapping. If phi equals zero, on the edges of the strip then, psi equals zero, on the edge of the half space, and vice versa. Also, if the normal derivative of phi, equals zero, on the edges of the strip then, the normal derivative of psi equals zero, on the edge of the half space, and vice versa. In the half space, v strictly greater than zero, let u, v be a general point, and alpha, beta, be a given point. From our earlier discussion, 
we can write down the Green's function for the half space with the homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the boundary, V equals zero. Here is the Green's function. The general point, U, V, and the given point, alpha, beta, in the half space are mapped to the points, x, y, and, xi, eta, respectively, in the infinitely long strip. We will transform the Green's function for the half space with the homogeneous Dirichlet condition, to a function of the points, x, y, and, xi, eta, in the infinitely long strip. We express U, V, and, alpha, beta, in the Green's function, capital omega, u, v, alpha, beta, in terms of, x, y, and, xi, eta, by using the equations that give the conformal mapping. This is what we obtained. If we express the exponential function of pi x over h, as its Taylor series about x equals xi, as well as, the sine function of pi y over h, and the cosine function of pi y over h, as their Taylor series about y equals eta, we find that the transformed Green's function tends to, the fundamental solution of the two-dimensional Laplace's equation in the OXY plane, as the point x y, approaches the point xi eta. Since the homogeneous Dirichlet condition is invariant under the conformal mapping, the transformed Green's function gives us a Green's function for the infinitely long strip with the homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the edges of the strip. Here is the derived Green's function for the infinitely long strip, y strictly greater than 0, and y strictly less than h with the homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the edges, y equals 0, and, y equals h. In a similar way, we can derive a Green's function for the infinitely long strip, y strictly greater than 0, and y strictly less than h, with the homogeneous Newman condition on the edges, y equals 0, and, y equals h. The book, A Beginner's Course in Boundary Element Methods, gives two special Green's functions for the region exterior to a circle. The circle has radius, A, and its center is at the origin of the OXY Cartesian coordinate system, that is, the region is given by, X square plus Y square, strictly greater than, A, square. The first Green's function, expressed in terms of complex functions, for the region, x square plus y square, strictly greater than, a, square, with a homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the circle, is given here. The second Green's function for the region, x square plus y square, strictly greater than, a, square, with a homogeneous Newman condition on the circle, is given here. If you find this video lesson useful, please show your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, Aproxical.